I'd like to solve 6-15 using the calculus relationships between the shear force, the distributed load, and the bending moment. Uh, up here we've got uh, the slope of V versus X is equal to the negative of the value of W. Uh, this one says, uh, the integral form of this one says uh, the change in the shear force is equal to the negative of the area under the W versus X curve and this one says the slope of m versus x is equal to the value of the shear force and finally the integral version of this one says the change in the bending moment is equal to the area under the v versus x graph. Here's the uh, free body diagram for the given configuration and I've already uh, solved the statics problem. So uh, replace the distributed load with uh, effective concentrated load. Uh, did the sum of the moments to get F sub A and the sum of the forces to get F sub B. So I got the uh, reaction forces already done. And now uh, my idea is I want to make a graph of V versus X and the author recommends putting it directly under the original free body diagram and that's why I drew uh, the free body diagram off to uh, one side. Uh, I did the, that part of the problem, the statics problem over there. So I'm going to try the V versus X graph. Uh, this is capital V and it's going to be in uh, KIP, kilopounds. I say try because sometimes you run off the scale and you got to uh, rescale and more or less start over. This is going to be X in feet, put uh, feet below it. All right. So, uh, we start off, the end of the beam has no forces acting on it, so the shear force in it is going to be zero. Uh, in my mind, sometimes I draw a little uh, free body diagram of just this little uh, section at the end there, and uh, it's got bending moment here, uh, shear force, and uh, that's the V, this was the 50, and this is uh, M, do the sum of the forces in the vertical direction. You see minus V, uh, sum of the forces up being equal to zero tells you minus V is equal to zero. So V is equal to zero. So this whole graph gets started. Uh, that I'm just showing you my logic there. Um, you don't have to show that as work. You can if you want. And so if there's a mistake, actually, you can get some credit for extra work that you showed as long as it's correct but this is how it gets started and then there's a jump right there because of that F sub A and uh, I know it uh, it's going to be a, a jump in the upward direction um, again I'll show my uh, my thinking on that if I cut it off so it's just uh, epsilon longer then uh, three feet and the limit is epsilon goes to zero so uh, this distributed load hasn't started to kick in yet this is just the beam I've drawn it just a little bit longer than alpha A so point A is right there there's F A acting on it and now uh, just to the right of that I put uh, the capital V on there for clockwise and the bending moment for completeness, I got bending moment over here, but when I sum the forces in the upper direction, uh, V, uh, F sub A minus V is equal to zero, and so V is equal to F sub A, and it's positive. I, I put V on there in the positive sense. So, uh, without showing all that work, I just say uh, there's a jump discontinuity in this function. V jumps up to F sub A which uh, is my uh, 13.167. I chose choose to draw it as a dashed line going up there. I don't care if you put a solid line in there. I'm going to call that the 13.66.1667. And then I'm on that axis that's already, I tell you that it's uh, kilopounds. And this is the uh, 
three foot mark. All right, so it jumps up to 13.167. All right, from then on all the way out to B at 15 feet, this thing has, the W is a constant, so we got a constant slope. Uh, the slope of V versus X is negative the value of W, so I got a constant negative slope. And uh, the other thing is, uh, I know where it's got to end up. Uh, it's got to end up at whatever the value of F sub B is. F sub B uh, it tends to rotate things around counterclockwise, so it uh, corresponds to a negative um, shear force at the end. Or if I just took that a little sliver there right near the end, so that F sub B acting up on it, um, to make it tell time, V would have to be up only for completeness. I don't need this for this argument. I'll put the M on there. And the sum of the force in the vertical direction is equal to zero. Quickly tells us that V is equal to minus F sub B. So, uh, again, that's why I made this in video form. I want to show my logic, but you don't have to show all that work. All right, so it's got to end up uh, down here at, uh, I'm calling it minus 4.833 three kilopounds. So I'll put that on my graph which is to put it all the way over here. Kind of tell people where I'm at there. Minus four point eight three three three. Alright, so then this is just a straight line from there to there. It doesn't look all that straight though, does it? Alright, hard to draw with these. So, uh, I'm going to give it one more try, and then uh, no matter how that turns out, I'll just label it. Oops, not quite that bad. And now, i got to make it so that the dots at least come together a little bit. This is difficult with these markers here. So this is all straight. Straight. Okay. That takes care of V versus X. Um, now, uh, I'd like to make the graph of uh, M versus X. Um, it starts out We've got some moment on there, and that applied moment would tend to make the, the beam frown, so I would call that a negative value. But uh, if you want to convince yourself, if I just draw a little stub uh, of this uh, beam, that one right there, I could say uh, there's the shear force bending moment M. Here's the applied moment. Uh, the 50, I do the sum of the moments uh, clockwise about point P, call that point P. Uh, I'll go counterclockwise about point P, so I got, oh, and that's equal to 0, M minus 50, oh, plus 50 is equal to 0, so M is equal to minus 50. Um, and then there's no more bending moment uh, the whole way through. So if I instead of making that a tiny sliver, I had made it uh, 2.9 feet, I'd still have the exact same result. So the bending moment starts off at minus 50, and it's constant all the way out to 3 feet. So let's uh, get the diagram of bending moment versus position started. So M versus X. This is M in KIP feet. And it starts out at zero, by the way, that's uh, three feet right there, that's 15 feet. 
And so the bending moment starts out at minus 50. All right. Then, uh, from there, uh, notice we got no jump in the bending moment. There's no more applied couple. There was an applied couple at the end, uh, but beyond that, there's no applied couple. So no more jumps. No jumps in bending moment. Um, when we get out to point A, we do have a jump in the slope. Uh, so uh, this had a zero slope, and then boom, the value of V, remember the slope of M versus X is the value of V. The value of V jumps up to 13.1667 and so the slope jumps up high. And then the slope, the value here is gradually, gradually decreasing so the slope is decreasing so I got a curve and then uh, it peaks over here. And uh, then at the end of the beam, it's the bending moment's got to come to zero because uh, if if I go beyond the end of the beam, I get uh, zero bending moment, and uh, there are no jumps in it because there are no applied couples. So the bending moment is uh, the when I'm doing this part, I don't know how big the peak is going to be. I don't know where the peak is going to be. I'm going to draw it right there and say that the bending moment curve goes something like this. Uh, to get characteristics of the graph, I can say uh, the bending moment peaks where V is equal to zero. The slope is zero for M versus X where uh, V is equal to zero since the value of V is the slope of M versus X. So uh, the question is uh, where is that? And uh, for that, um, I need to be able to express, uh, I, I guess I could say this area has to be, um, that's probably not uh, the, the right, that's not exactly what I want to say. It's this area out to here on this graph. Let's see if I can uh, color that in for you. Um, this area. Has to be equal to 13.1667. In other words, the change in V is equal to the negative of the area under this curve. To get down to zero, I need the change in V has got to be minus 13.667. So as far as uh, getting this point, finding where V is equal to zero, I can say uh, V equals zero when um, I've defined what I mean by x. This is uh, lined up with the left-hand side of that. So uh, x minus 3. So if I go all the way out to this position, I'll call that x. x minus 3 will be uh, the uh, length of the shaded area. And then uh, 1.5 uh, will be uh, the height of it. So uh, that shaded area, when that shaded area um, that was x minus 3 times 13.1667 um, is equal to, um, I guess I'll take the negative of that area uh, minus, uh, ooh, that's not uh, 13.1667 there, it's uh, 1.5. So the negative of that area is equal to, and I'm going to put the, the uh, delta V from, I'll, I'll call it, is equal to minus 
13.1667. Delta V is the area under W versus X. So uh, the area under that is the length of it. X minus 3 is the uh, delta V is the negative of that area. The area of it is the length times the height. And the negative of that will be that. So minus 13.1667. So uh, if I solve that, I find that x is equal to 11.77, call it uh, 7, 8, and that's feet. So that's where um, v crosses through 0. 11.7778 doesn't look like a 7 that middle one 7778 that's good enough and uh, at that point uh, the uh, delta M is going to be the area under this cur curve so at that point, uh, delta M from 3 to 5 um, is equal to the area under VDX, that is M uh, max minus M at 3, which is uh, a minus 50. It is going to be equal to the area under this, which is 1 half the base, that's uh, X minus 3 times the height. Uh, Got to look at this triangle again. It's the area of this triangle. Uh, so uh, the height is 13.1667. Um, and by the way, I'm going to call that 11.778 uh, uh, minus 3. I'm going to put that in there right off the bat since I got the number on the graph. 11.7778. Minus 3, and then times the height, which is 13.6667. So M max is equal to, uh, this is the change in M, so uh, yeah, okay. M max is equal to whatever I got on the right, minus 50. And that evaluates to, actually before I better evaluate that, I better fix it up. It's supposed to be 13.1667 uh, there, not 13.667. Uh, so let's go 1667. And then M max evaluates to. 7.787 um, KIP feet kilopounds times feet so uh, that's where we are on this graph right here Seven point. Eight something. Uh, seven point eight. Nope, seven point seven. Eight seven kilopounds feet. So that's where it peaks, and uh, that's enough. Somebody might be cross interested in uh, where it crosses zero. I think uh, one of the big things that we can say here is that. Uh, it's at this three feet where uh, the stress is uh, probably gonna is gonna be the greatest. So the contribution, the the bending moment is greatest there, and 
the shear force is greater it's there so it's three feet plus epsilon and the limit as epsilon goes to zero just to the left of that it's zero but as far as you know, want to find where the stress is greatest it'll be right there all right so that uh, represents the calculus method for uh, getting the graphs um, there was um, in that 615 we also had to get uh, the values I would say as far as getting the values it's generally uh, easier to uh, you know draw free body diagrams of sections but but we can get the values here so uh, we we can say uh, you know, the formulas for V and M. They ask us uh, in the problem, uh, also determine the shear moment in the beam as functions of X for X is X on 3 to 15 feet. So uh, on uh, X is equal to 3 to 15 feet, we can say that V uh, is equal to 13.1667 minus the area under this uh, curve right here. So uh, the area under that curve uh, from from here to any arbitrary value of x. So if x is out to here, for instance, uh, this distance right here will be x minus 3. So the area under the curve will be x minus 3 times 1.5 and uh, remember the change of V is actually the negative of that so uh, that's why I get the the minus area there let's let's see if I got that right so uh, try to try to write that down V the, the formula for V V is equal to 13.1667 and then minus um, X minus 3 so times the area uh, times the height of that times 1.5 so this is the area under the curve and V is the initial value uh, minus the area under the curve or plus yeah because the remember the the relationship has a negative in here. The change in V is equal to the negative of the area under W versus X. So that would be my answer for the formula for V. Um, and it's good uh, on uh, X from... Uh, well, I'll put the, the range down there. Good on X... Uh, greater than 3 feet and less than or equal to 15 feet. Uh, feet. I think I put that in there. So try erasing this on uh, 3 feet. So x is greater than 3 feet but less than or equal to 15 feet. It's got a jump discontinuity at three feet, so it's not really defined there. And then M is going to be its starting value at three feet, three feet, which is minus fifty. Uh, plus the area under the curve. of V versus X, so this time it's plus. So plus the area under, uh, let's see if we went uh, just out to here, uh, it would be the area of uh, this region. So let, you know, if, if X, choose some arbitrary value of X, so it's not the area of a triangle, but the area of this trapezoid. And uh, I'd say, how do I want to do the area of that? Um, to me, it's a, a little bit of a hassle. So I'd rather, rather than try to calculate the area, I'll go ahead and do the integral. Um, now, now that I got a, an expression for V, I can do that plus um, the integral. 
um, I think I, I choose to uh, briefly define uh, a new coordinate system um, so I'm going to call this uh, x1 I think the integral will be easier for me to do if I define an x1 so x1 is just x minus 3 um, so in terms of x1 this is going to be the integral uh, so v in terms of x1 is just this 13.1 stuff minus x1 times 1.5 so I'm going to put 13.1667 minus uh, 1.5 x1 uh, dx1 and that's from x1 is equal to 0 up to uh, I'm going to actually call it x1 there, so I guess I should put primes on these as my integral of variation. This is going to be my, li my limit. So I'm finding the area under v versus x1 uh, from x1 is equal to 0 up to some arbitrary value, which I'm calling x1. Alright, let's uh, do that m is equal to, so this is uh, equal to minus 50 plus 13.1667 x1 prime, oops, x1 prime uh, minus, uh, bump that up to power of 2 divided by the new power, I get 0 0.75 x1 prime squared all this evaluated from 0 up to x1 so it's minus 50 uh, plus 13.1667 x1 minus 0.75 x1 squared so m as a function of x is equal to minus 50 plus 13.1667 x minus 3, that's how I defined x1, minus uh, 0.75 times x minus 3 quantity squared. So that's my answer for m as a function of x and uh, on uh, the interval x greater than 3 feet and less than or equal to 15 feet and that's the same answer I got doing the problem the other way uh, let me check on the v yeah, uh, those two answers agree with uh, the answers I got solving the problem the other way. The uh, with practice, I mean, I was showing you like all my uh, all my thoughts, you know, the the reasoning on all this uh, with that stuff that I wrote in green and then erased. Uh, but with practice, this method goes a lot faster as far as uh, getting uh, the graph of uh, v versus x and the graph of m versus x. Uh, except for some details, you know, finding uh, where the, the M is a max, so you know, how high up to go, uh, that can be a, uh, a little not trivial. But getting a gross idea of the curve, you know, it, it goes straight out to here, and then it slopes down, and it peaks in the middle, and it ends at uh, uh, zero. All that was uh, pretty easy using this uh, calculus method, and then find uh, getting the the v versus x and the m versus x. The v versus x, I guess, was pretty easy, just thinking the area under that uh, w curve. But the the m versus x, I preferred not to look at it as a, a trapezoid. I think the, the point here is to get how high up it is to the line. I would have to evaluate, you know, uh, this 
this is some value of x, so I got an expression for what v is there at this point. And then I'm finding the area of this trapezoid, which I could look at as the area of this rectangle plus the area of that triangle. But uh, that seemed like a hassle, so the actual easier way for me to get the area under that curve uh, was to use, uh, you know, the fact that the area under the curve is the same thing as the integral. So to actually do the integral, but uh, all right. Uh, so uh, you do get the same answer either way. You should practice doing it both ways, and with enough practice, this business of using the calculus uh, relationships uh, gets the curves down roughly much faster.